And I want to be that artist that's like still evolving and mm -hmm. still growing and, and you could see a progression. So today I'm interviewing Jake Parker. He's a concept artist and children's book illustrator. He worked at Blue Sky, uh, Real Effects. He started at Fox Animation Studios. He's all. You have also funded a successful Kickstarter for your art. Three Kickstarters. Three. Yes. Um, and you just released your first children's book, Little Bot and Sparrow. Mm -hmm. um, and is there anything else? Yeah, this this one right here. Uh, I also so Little Bot and Sparrow, my first children's book, and I also did Inktober. I started in the Inktober. That's right. Monthly challenge, October cool. challenge. Yeah. So yeah, you have quite the reputation under your belt, and you've been pretty successful for yourself. Um, to start out, I typically like to ask, what uh, were you always an artist ever since you were a little kid? Were you always drawing, or is this something that developed later in your life? Ever since I was a little kid. In fact, I think I have right here. Oh, here we are. This is the first book I ever made. <laughs> um, this was. I wrote this story. My mom actually wrote it out as I, uh, she transcribed what I was telling her. But then I cut it out and taped it together. I think I made that when I was like five years old. So really, yeah, this is your see. second children's book. Exactly. This is, this your is first. my first book. How old were you? I think I was like five or six. But you can wow. see there, authored by Jacob, illustrated by Jacob. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So it's been it's been something that's been going on forever. Cool, cool. And were you? Uh, always the best or is it something that you had to work on how much like what percent is it talent and what percent is it hard work uh i i think there was a there was some talent there which i was able to like see something and replicate it um but then the craft like being able to make a good line mm -hmm. and to understand composition and understand you know proportion and all those kinds of things um that that took a lot of work and I had a lot of good friends growing up who were artists as well, and they inspired me. And, and I, I think there's, I don't know if it was on their part, but on my part, there was friendly competition. Like, I gotta do better than them. And they would come back with something that I just thought was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I had to do, you know, I had to like try my best to reach their standard like all the time. Was this something that like you struggled with the most where like for me, when when I was little, I would draw dinosaurs all the time, and so as I got better and better, I just drew more and more creatures until I had to start drawing people, and I was really bad at it, so I just would avoid it and not draw yeah. until I finally had to force myself, I needed to learn how to draw people, so I can't really be an artist. Yeah. Was there anything like that for you that was really difficult? Yeah, I've always had a hard time capturing likenesses, so drawing a person who actually looks like the person, mm. uh, and so... At some point, I decided just to really play into my strengths mm -hmm. and not like I thought. Oh, I got to be a portrait. I got to be able to do portraits or caricatures or things like that. And I realized I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So there are some things that I was just like, I'm not that good at them. I'll step back and I'll really go strong on this other stuff. And that was, you know. Um, not so much as being able to render something beautifully with the right lighting and instead focusing on storytelling and sequential art and things like that. So, like, for, you said you didn't do portraits, but when you were drawing, you started out drawing a lot of robots, right? Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. Did you still have to work at that? Or you were a little kid and you were just pumping out these amazing robots? Yeah, I worked on it. It was something I really, I liked doing and I, I did it a lot, but it was, yeah, it was something I worked on, like practiced mm -hmm. all the time, and I would see it. other artists draw, you know, my favorite artists were like Shiro, where we got here, he did um, Appleseed, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but um, this is a comic in the 90s, and you could see like, I mean, look at that cover, look at that robot stuff. So I was I was eating this stuff up in high school, and I wanted to draw like that. Mm -hmm. So I, copied, I can definitely see the resemblance. Yeah, I copied a lot of it and learned a lot from it, and it, it filtered its way into how I work now. Yeah, this guy's a huge influence on me. Wow. Yeah, look at that. See that panel right there where she's like climbing into her mech? 
that just was like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> so I was like, oh my gosh. You know, uh, I think American robot design at the time, at the same time it was, things were just flashy. Mm -hmm. And this had a, like a grounded realism mm -hmm. to it. Uh, almost like these guys were engineers um, who learned how to draw, you right. know? And so uh, I've looked at all these Japanese artists and, and learned a ton of stuff from them. So you didn't go to school. Mm -mm. How did you get your start? I hear a lot of people these days, um, I, I teach workshops at high schools mm -hmm. and kids will ask me questions and they'll say, well, I can't afford to go to school to be an artist, um, so I'm going to do something else. Yeah. Um, what is your answer to that? Can you go... Can you become an artist without going to an art school? Yeah, it's like... I mean, you did it. Is it... Right. Are you just like this magic... You were just the luckiest no, no, person you, ever? Or you can you have anyone to, do that? You have to learn your craft. And, I, and you can learn that at art school, and there's lots of good art schools. You can learn it online. There's lots of online stuff. Or you can learn it uh, through mentorships and like um, uh, apprenticeships, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I look at my education as sort of like an apprenticeship. I... I got a job at an animation studio like as the scrub just just doing like basic drawing stuff what was that fox animation fox animation so how did you get in there were you like i'll sweep your floor is there no i well i i went I legitimately like i sent a portfolio and said mm -hmm. look i've got some ability here mm -hmm. um and they gave me a test to see if i could do the kind of drawing that they needed and i squeaked by and passed the test <laughs> Um, and then once I was there, it was I had access to all these talented artists, and I just tried to learn from them mm -hmm. as best as I could. And ever since then, I've I've always been trying to learn from the artists around me and pick mm -hmm. up little things that they're doing and and, and try to get better. Um, so today, you know, it's my recommendation to an artist is is you know someone who wants to just to learn the craft is to figure out a way they can apprentice under somebody. Mm -hmm. um, if they can't, take the money that they would, take a fraction of the money mm -hmm. that they would spend on school and spend it on online classes. You know, like say you have $10,000, mm -hmm. right? Um, which if you, I, I kind of feel like if you're living at home and you're working a job, you can save up $10,000. I mean, if you have $10,000, <laughs> you could take every course on almost every online art school out there. Exactly. If you went to SVS, Schoolism, Noman Workshop. Could, you could, and the, what you could do is, is take 5000 and spend it on online, and then take the other 5000 and just contact every artist that you love and just buy their time from them. Mm -hmm. And say, I know, uh, you know, how much is a, a day or an hour? Mm -hmm. And and can I get that from you? And will you just teach me whatever you know in that in whatever we can learn in that amount of time? Right. You know, if nobody's ever contacted me to say that, like, how much would it cost for two hours of your time for you to just teach me everything mm -hmm. that I could learn in those two hours? Or you know, mm -hmm. setting up so and and I I honestly think like you could contact 20 two of them might get back to you with a yes mm -hmm. and and you're way better off than um than i think you know some of the other alternatives out there yeah there's a i have a lot of friends i went to college for about a year and i dropped out and i have some friends who are graduating now mm -hmm. and or already graduated and they're not even they're way in debt thousands mm -hmm. of dollars in debt and they're not doing what they wanted to yeah. do they're not artists they're not illustrators or anything so yeah if you take that route and you it doesn't work out all you've really lost is your time and some money but not nearly as much as you would have right otherwise so right <clears throat> so for you you went to fox and then from there fox shut down right mm -hmm. and you went on and did some other things what is uh your ultimate goal are you there like have you reached to that point where you're like this is what i wanted in life i'm satisfied or are you still is there something still at the end of the rainbow that you're trying to get to uh, I want to, uh, I think for me right now is I just want to have, they've got all these projects that I haven't done yet that I just want to do and, and, and point to them and say, there's another thing I did. Mm -hmm. So for me right now, for the next, are they different, like completely different projects or just like more stories? Uh, graphic novels, mm -hmm. children's books, 
Um, I'd like to make a movie someday. Um, and then other things like uh, specific classes for SVS that I want to do and, mm -hmm. and have that be like the definitive thing like that a kid can go to and learn from mm -hmm. for that particular subject. Um, I have aspirations to have, you know, a, a, an online shop that just has a ton of stuff, like mm -hmm. just is a creative outlet, because I like, I like artifacts mm -hmm. and, and just things that have these like sentimental values yeah. and I want to make those things for yeah, people. Yeah, I can tell. I mean, you got <laughs> dinosaurs right. and robots everywhere. Right, yeah. right. So, so I have all these, these outlets. And it'd be cool, you know, to have 10 really cool t-shirts out there that mm -hmm. I've designed. Uh, it'd be cool to have, um, you know, there's, a, there's, you know, maybe there's little toys or, or things like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's there's stuff that I want to do still. So even though you're successful, you've done all these things, you're basically mm -hmm. pretty much working for yourself now. Mm -hmm. You're saying there's still, you should always still keep making goals. Yeah. There's never an end. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was talking to a friend of mine too, and we, we compare artists, um, we were comparing artists that were in their 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and how some of them like still draw the same way that they did in their 30s, mm -hmm. and some of them advanced and, and have a completely different style mm -hmm. than, they do, than they did when they were younger. And I want to be that artist that's like still evolving and mm -hmm. still growing, and and you could see a progression. You know, this is how I drew in my 20s, this is how I drew in my 30s, mm -hmm. this is how I drew in my 40s, and, and so on. Yeah, I was watching some stuff about Aaron Blaze. Mm -hmm. He was talking about how when they worked on Lion King and they basically shut down the 2D animation department and most of his friends were just like, oh, we're out of a job. <laughs> and he created a completely new style of digital painting. I don't know if you've seen his work, mm -mm. but his old stuff looks like the Lion King and mm -hmm. his new stuff is extremely photorealistic, textured, mm -hmm. like, fairies with field of depth and air particles and everything which is wow. like <laughs> the complete opposite end of, of the Lion King and yeah. he's been at it for 30 40 years now so um, that's pretty sweet that's awesome um, what about what's some advice you would tell your younger self if you could go back in time and tell yourself like oh hey little Jake don't do that or you should be doing this instead uh, that's a good question question I I would probably tell like 20 year old Jake yeah that J that age of Jake I would I would say to him um, get I would I would I would tell him to learn how to manage distractions and and I would say make more stuff and do less messing around um, uh, I feel like right now I'm, I'm finally getting to this place where I can understand like really the value of time and how fleeting time can be and and thinking back to the days when I had all the time in the world and I and I was less productive than I am now you know mm -hmm. so uh, but then again in, in my 20s I did a lot of playing around and stuff that I think was helpful for me to become the person I am now so mm -hmm. I would just say, like, learn to manage distractions and and really, when you sit down to, to create, have that be creation time. Mm -hmm. Learn that. Learn that ability. So on the flip side, then, for people that maybe are already successful artists, mm -hmm. for you, how do you kind of gauge... Is it ever hard for you to make time for, like, family time or leisure activities? For me, sometimes, when I, like, just try and relax, I have this, like, anxiety, like, I... I should be working. I'm just like wasting time. How do you manage that, or do you not deal with that at all? No, I deal with that. But when I'm at my best, it's because I know that I got the amount of work done that I could have gotten done in that time period. Uh, and I have hard, like, set time periods for family. Like Sunday is family day. Mm -hmm. Friday nights is um, play time with. You know, there's kids. I've mm -hmm. got the five kids here, and they're usually having people over for movie night or whatever. So I, I usually just chisel out Friday nights to facilitate those types of things. Saturday nights is usually date night with my mm -hmm. wife, so we've got like good one-on-one -on -one time. And then I usually carve out um, some time each day to just, uh, uh, of course, dinner time and those types of things mm -hmm. to to be there with the kids. 
uh, it's hard sometimes to be physically with them and not be mentally present and to be thinking yeah. about that. And so I've, I've been working on that, and, and it's best when I write down the things that I have accomplished, mm -hmm. I write down the things that I didn't accomplish, and set a time for those things to get accomplished. And that way I know that I don't need to stress about them because they already have allocated time to the, right. the next day or you know the next week or something like that. So it's, it's really manage, figuring out a schedule, managing it, knowing realistically how much time you have in a day, how much, how long certain things take, mm -hmm. and then fitting those things into those time periods. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I have my I calendar have right here. This is what I use. You can see this. I made this. It's got the JP logo on the back. I'm yeah, make I definitely one. need to do that more. <laughs> but this has, you know, each day of the month. Yeah, that's it like my really goals, detailed. What I want to do and. Um, you know, my checklist for Is this hourly or these are days? These are days. Oh, okay. I was like, wow. And then for each day I have my okay. My to do list. So today was I didn't do today yet. <laughs> so like how many hours do you work a day about, would you say? Eight. Eight? Do you try and keep it at that? No. I'll on some days I try to do more. Uh, okay. and some days I'll do less. Some days it's like seven. But I try to start at 9, I cut out at 5.30, and I take a half hour lunch. And then if I have the energy, I'll do some work at night. Or if I wake up early, I'll do some work early in the morning before 9. Yeah, uh, I was watching an interview with Lois. She said she only does six hour days just because she's more productive. If she tries to go more than that, it mm -hmm. just overall burns her out. Yeah. So. Well, I should say that's not eight hours straight of right. being creative. That's an eight hour day. emails and social and media administrative work and right all that stuff yeah so <clears throat> you have worked both in studio and freelance mm -hmm. what are i mean i right now i'm mostly working freelance mm -hmm. um and i'm planning on going to a studio mm -hmm. and i find that when i'm working freelance it can be hard to keep going when you're by yourself all the time mm -hmm. like you're not surrounded by other people um do you deal with that, or do you prefer working by yourself instead of working with other people? I used to really miss being around other people and feeding off their creativity, and now I really relish being alone. Like, I love the isolation. Mm -hmm. As long as I get um, these hits of, of being with people. So, like, I went to CTN a couple weeks ago, and that was great to just soak in all the creativity and, and see old friends and mm -hmm. and just do uh you know just really uh fill my my creative bucket um mm -hmm. and every once in a while here i'll go out to lunch with other creative people and mm -hmm. and i'll skype with friends creative friends and stuff like that um, but for the most part like i'm way more productive here than i was at a studio mm -hmm. so you have a really big social media presence, mm -hmm. and it kind of popped up pretty quickly, relatively speaking, to a lot of other people. A couple years ago, you basically had no following, if I'm correct, right? Very uh, small anyways, compared to what yeah, it is now. Yeah, compared to what it is now. So what, what did you do, or what things did you do to get it to that point? Was it just kind of like an accident? You just started posting your work and people followed, or were there deliberate steps where you told yourself, I have a goal of getting this many followers mm -hmm. and um, and not only how did you get it but if you did do it on purpose why because a lot of people think followers are just you know they like the feeling of having a lot of people like yeah. your work but there's a lot more practical use you can use it for so right. how did you get there and what what do you use your uh, following for now what really made the mental switch was my first Kickstarter and I think at that time I had maybe 10,000 followers total mm -hmm across all the platforms. Which, to give some reference, now you have like 300,000 or yeah, more? Yeah, something like that. Uh, 260 on Instagram and 180 on Facebook and 20,000 on Twitter and 50,000 on YouTube. Uh, so right. it's like... It's a lot. It's a, it's a lot now. Uh, what, what happened with that first Kickstarter, though, is I realized how many, how many people uh, were, you know, came to my basically bought my stuff <laughs> because or supported me and backed my thing 
because they heard about it on social media. And I realized, you know, I, I saw the numbers like, oh, you have 10,000 people who follow you and you got 5% of them to actually give you money. So if you can get more people to follow you, you can raise that number, that 5%, right. that 2 to 5% who... And, and so for me it was... It was like, okay, let's work on social media and let's let's deliberately try to grow this to get as big a following as I can so that I can build this fan base of people who will support my work mm -hmm. so that I love... It's so nice being able to pay bills with PayPal instead of <laughs> waiting for someone like a freelance job to come in mm -hmm. and like scraping around and being like, does anybody have work? Mm -hmm. And just just knowing like, oh, by the way, I've got books in my shop and people are like, oh yeah, I never got that book. Mm -hmm. And I make, you know, 10 sales and then, you know, and then I've got that money there that I can go, you know, say here, honey, go pay the, the mortgage payment, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I like that. And, and it, it just feels a lot more stable and secure to me than having a job I can get laid off on or having a freelance work that, you know, the problem with that is it's like there's there's months where everybody wants my work mm -hmm. and then there's like months where nobody wants it and my shop is just so much more consistent. Right. You know? Plus with freelance work, all, some of the work I get, I take it because I need it, but it's like you hate doing it. Yeah. It's not fun at all, you yeah. know? They want who knows what, a, a right. painting of Mickey Mouse, and you're like, okay, I guess, you know? <laughs> right. Um, so what percentage would you say then of your following are you able to convert into cash flow for you? Uh, one to two percent. Okay. Will actually spend money. On Which me. ends up for you still being pretty big. Yeah. Have you heard of the 1,000 true fans philosophy? Mm -hmm. And I guess you pretty much, you have like 2,000, 3,000 true yeah, fans. Yeah, I've got then. two or 3,000 true fans, but I'm really only offering them 25 to $50 worth of stuff for them to buy a year. Uh -huh. So, it, I mean, it's good, but I need to supplement it with other things. So I do children's books and, right. and, and things like that. My goal is to, every year, um, put out enough quality material that people are like excited to buy it, they want to have these things, these artifacts, these books, and things like that, and to just build this library of, of things. My whole, you know, one of my uh, mantras, or I don't know if it's a mantra, but it's like a, a vision statement, mm -hmm. is building a universe one drawing at a time. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like if you have all of my art books, and if you have the comics that I've created, and if you have you know, if you follow me on social media and all this stuff, and and even with like the T-shirts that I'm designing mm -hmm. right now that I, I want to share, they're they're all a part of this universe. Um, it's not just as a design mm -hmm. for the sake of a design, but it's linked to mm -hmm. these stories and these characters and these other things. Uh, and, and my goal is that, you know, at some point it's just the Jake Parker universe. Right. And that's what that's what frustrates me, and that's what I get down on myself for is that. I'm not there yet, and it just takes time, and I get so distracted, and yeah. you know, I'm there's sure, all these other things going. I'm on. sure 40 years from now we'll all be going to Jake Parker Land instead of Disneyland, oh, no. <laughs> riding missile mouth rides. <laughs> um, so, without, I mean, whatever you're comfortable sharing, as a freelance artist, you're not working for a studio, mm -hmm. and you're not just doing freelance work to pay the bills. What different sources of income do you rely on? Mm -hmm. I mean, you have your children's book and. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, what else? So, SVS on, Learn. Online shop, SVS Learn, children's books, just random publishing freelance jobs, like a book cover here and a, mm. um, you know, something else there. Um, comic book conventions, um, Kickstarters when I do them, and then uh, commissions. So is there one piece of that pie that is by far the heavy hitter that's doing most, or is it just all spread out? It's all really spread out. I'd say the two big ones are my are, are children's books and my shop. Yeah. But that's awesome, though, because that means if any one of those goes out, you're still, you're still yeah, pretty I, okay. You I know? don't have to, yeah, yeah, it's true. I can just As, lean into another one a right. little harder to make up, make up the difference. What time is it? Oh, okay. Sorry. 
Oh, you're good. Are you going to do dinner soon? Short time out, that's no worries. I think that was about it. Um, okay. But, so, thanks again yeah. for being willing to meet with me. There was some yes. awesome information you shared with us good today. Good to meet you in person. Yeah, totally. I will uh, post a link to all your your sites, your children's book, where they can buy that in your shop mm -hmm. and stuff in the description. And go check out his stuff. Check out his site. He has some awesome art. And if you don't follow him on Instagram, you should, because uh, yep. pretty much everything he draws is pure gold. So so it's at Jake Parker on Instagram. It's mrjakeparker.com if you want to learn more about everything I'm doing. And if you want to get my book, Little Bot and Sparrow, it's littlebotandsparrow.com or just search for it on Amazon. And SVS Learn dot com if you want to take some of my online classes. Cool. Thanks, right. man. Yeah. No problem.